Chuck Bailey, a William Mary geology professor, and we're here along the banks of the North Anna River. And as you can hear from the water tumbling over the falls behind me, we are in a, in a region where the rocks are sticking out of the river forming rapids. This is a fall zone. And the fall zone in this part of Virginia is underlain by a series of busted, broken, faulted rocks. One of the things that I study is how rocks are deformed. I also want to understand sort of when they were deformed and potentially apply that to understanding things like why we may have earthquakes that are still occurring in central Virginia, a region far from any known tectonic boundary, but a region that's riddled with ancient faults. We're here at the fall zone of the North Anna, and I'm looking at these bo busted, broken up rocks. What's really important to me is the fractures and the faulting we find here, which record earthquakes that happened millions of years ago. What we have preserved here are faults that record the opening of the Atlantic Ocean and the building of the Appalachian mountain chain. From those, we can extrapolate to modern data and look at earthquakes in the Central Virginia Seismic Zone. All right, let's make it happen. Okay, here we go. All right. Yeah, so again, I think that very much looks like a case-hardened grind. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is really a monster of a pseudotacolite thing. And you know, I mean, this is what, 15, 10, 15 centimeters thick? But look at all the feldspars that are in that. If this is an injection vein, that was a very, very large earthquake. It's pretty clear we've got two sets of mineralized fractures cutting that. So, so what are in these two sets, John? Well, you can look, um, you can almost see it just there. Uh, you have the cleavage that you'd expect from calcite. Really so cool. this is pretty cool in the sense that, you know, we've got this sort of earthquake generated quenched glass, and then that later is getting refractured. Now, of course, the $20,000 question is, what's the age of the melting, and then what's the age of the post sort of uh, earthquake fracturing that created these other vein sets in there? What we have here is, uh, it's frictional melting of movement along a fault. In essence, a paleo earthquake caused such frictional heating that the rock around it melted and then instantly recrystallized into this glass, this pseudotacolite. If the mineralogy there is good, then we can use these as a way of dating this paleo earthquake. And this was probably, this was a monster earthquake, probably at least a magnitude seven. Virginia is, is truly riddled with faults that by most logic, we would consider it to have been ancient faults. However, the earthquake last August, I think, sort of kicked us in the pants and shook us up a little bit in the sense that actually some of these faults are still active. The trouble is we don't know which ones are active and which one are old, dead, extinct faults. So one of the reasons that John and I have been investigating the fall zone rapids at North Anna is to see, can we identify old faults, younger faults, and even younger faults? So we've done the work on the ground. We know the geometry of these things. We know how they cut each other. We are learning a lot now about their structure microscopically. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is, is, is pay attention to their detailed chemistry and then actually use a number of sort of chemical techniques to try to determine when they last slip. So that to me is an important component in this research going into understanding you know, how and why we had these intraplate earthquakes that still sort of can rock eastern North America.